have questions. I can almost guarantee it. Hang on to them at our first location. I will work with each one of you hands-on to show you more tactics based on your specific device. So just kind of hang on to them. I know it's going to be hard, but I try to do my best to get it in your hands explanation as I can so that way we can move things along pretty quickly to get things rolling. So first and foremost, we're going to be using thermal imaging throughout the entire night. So thermal imaging, you guys should be able to see me in there. Red, orange, yellow guy. Sorry, Terry and Gary, but that means I'm the hottest thing inside the picture. So, <laughs> yes, that line works every time. So, we're going to try to keep somebody in view the whole night. Why? Because, obviously, we're going to be the warmest things out here. It is a little chilly for us here in Charleston, so if you're not from the south, this is chilly for us. I'm from the north, hence why I only have a hoodie on, but my blood has thinned <laughs> over the past 10 years. But anyway, um, so this is going to help us find what? What do you think? Ghosts. Yes. How so? In what way? Heat. Or season. not heat. Cold. Cold, spot. cold spots. Cold. Right. Yeah. We're literally looking for cold spots. Oh. So I have this guy set up with a blue dot bouncing around the screen. The blue dot is giving us the coldest point in the frame at that particular moment. So the cool thing about that is that blue dot will be on your video that you get back tomorrow morning. So um, you'll kind of, you know, have a little guidance of where to look. Again, I spot check all of these different recordings. So there might be some things that I miss. You guys are more than welcome to get in touch with me when you do find something. Gary, I think this one's going to go to you. He's like, yeah, I'm all about that. Yep. So look at my you're going to hold that guy horizontal oh. all night, okay. just the way it is. The camera is going to stay on your left with the wire on the left. Okay. So that's going to, because what happens is I'm going to give him a few starts and stops because the, the software board sucks. The hardware is great and the software sucks. So if we record for too long, we're going to lose everything we've done so far. And we don't want to do that. So I'll give you the cues. It's already recording. I do that on purpose so everybody knows how to watch the video. Um, but when you restart it up again and I say, let's get some video from here, I want you to have it exactly in that same position. So that way, because I splice it all together and YouTube doesn't know the flippies. So I got to give out his phone number. It's never fun. So that way we don't have an upside down video. Yeah. <laughs> He's got it. Cool. Not to mention, notice oh my I, gosh, I, I pointed out my quiet that. people already. That does record audio, so this way I don't get a commentary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not the one for that. No. Um, let's get out the other camera just so I can get this well balanced. Gary hasn't said one word. He's perfect for this. What? Oh, <coughs> Gary. So this guy. Oh. Okay, so you guys should not be able to see me in that small screen. I know it's pretty small, but it should be pretty dark in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's turn on some lights. Okay. So we're working with full spectrum lighting here. This is lighting you cannot see with your own eyes. The hope here is that we capture something we wouldn't normally be able to see with our own eyes. So again, based on whatever, however I bring out these specific devices, um, this is going to be running a good 30 to 40 minutes throughout the night, unlike the hour and a half that we'll probably get from the thermal imaging video, only because the files for this are giant. Um, and again, it doesn't record any sound because it's in a waterproof box. Um, so Terry, this one's gonna go to you. This one will need a battery change about halfway through our time together. Um, if it does freeze up, it has been giving me a little bit of trouble this past week. One night was super great, the next night, not so much. So it's been kind of back and forth. Um, so, yeah, and I'll show you more about that once we get Let's get into spirit boxes. We're going to use several times. Spirit boxes are a way for us to communicate with the dead. <laughs> Just wondering who might, who might want one. <laughs> I have four of them that we're going to be using tonight. So um, I have two of these that I'll be passing out one to each group. So obviously you're going to be getting one as well. Um, but these ones work a little bit differently than the rest. So spirit boxes is kind of like the white noise you guys see on TV. And then he, you know, Zach will tell you what he thinks he heard in a minute. <coughs> trying to convince you of the same thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing that in real time. Only mine are set up a little bit slower that on purpose. I want the radio chatter to come through. So if you hear song lyrics, commercials, um, anything that actually comes through that's a voice of any type, whether it's disembodied or from the radio, I want to know what it is. The reason being is it's a 50-50 shot that I can actually tie it to the place of where we are, a person in history I'm talking about, or even something going on along with one of us. So again, this one is going, this one's not recording, um, but the one that you're going to get is going to record. Um, so this one, the two people that have these are going to have earbuds in, so they're going to be the only two people that can hear it in real time. So, yeah, so it's really, it's much easier to use when you have an earbud, not to mention we can't be loud in certain spaces. So, again, it's much easier when you have one earbud in so you can listen to me and, you know, try to listen in on this guy as well. 
So this one is already pre-set up. Um, so Alana, you were super stoked about this one, so I'm going to hand it over to you. Let me plug in the earbud for you and then show you where the volume is because you can control that up and down all night long. So we just have to undo the twist tie. By the way, I do not want these earbuds back. Your wax is gross. <laughs> okay. I buy them in bulk. So nice. your volume button is the deal at the top. So you'll have to undo the twist tie. That would be stoked. Got it. Yours yeah. is going to record. Okay. So. With the recording that you guys get back tomorrow morning, I will give you 15 to 20 markers of things that I heard on top of all of the extra notes of things that we heard in real time. So even with yours, I'm still going to be asking you, what did you hear? For about every five minutes of this recording, I only listen to about a minute, and then I skip ahead for five more minutes. Then I skip ahead, and whatever I hear, I hear. Some of those things are going to be relevant to our location, some of them won't be. If it is, I will tell you why, and then give you the backlink to verify the information. I always give you backlinks. So, again, your volume is the wheel, not the button, and then you just have to undo the twist tie so you can get it set up for your ear. <coughs> The next spirit box. Just get these done and out of the way, right? So, this one is going to give us words in the center of the screen from time to time. It just said the word surface, right? It just popped up. So, what's cool about that is it's going to give us all of those words in a list with timestamps. So that way I can see where we're at. I know our route pretty well. Last night's tour only had 70 terms, so I'm going to clear them out. I've been averaging about 80 in a two hour time span, so just based on the night. I never know what's going to occur out of this. Keep in mind, this is a phone app. 80% of what comes up out of this thing is going to be BS. It's not going to mean anything. No, you're good. So, again, it's the other 5 to 20% that pops, that pops it up that will be relevant to a specific location, place, or something going on with one of us to the point where I have to give you some kind of background to be able to verify it. So, this one's going to go to you. Nice. I'm trying to remember names. Hang on. Sure. Oh, I know I didn't. I spoke to you. trying to remember. So, Trish, I'm going to come to you and I want to see the list. The way you get to it is the little white square next to the word. You'll be able to scroll through it once there's something actually there. Um, but I don't want to see every word that pops up. They're just interruptions. So I'll come to you as I'm kind of spot checking everybody. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Like Marco. <laughs> the next device is multifunctional. So this is got a lot of things going along with it. So the first thing it does is it measures EMF. You guys have probably seen these on television, right? I got the little blinky things. lights. So I usually hand those to the kids of the tour. So they're very sensitive. This one is digital. It is not as sensitive. So when something does occur on there, it will still measure things from our cell phones, buildings, wires, those kind of things. Um, so the top number, anything above 2.5, Cindy, I want to know what's going on. Okay. So 2.5 is the second green dot on the one I just showed you. So okay. I'm still going to debunk it with things going on there. The reason I'm giving this to you is because Gary has that thermal imaging camera, and if he finds something, you and I can debunk the cold spot with the yellow probe at the top because that's the bottom number. Okay. The last thing that it has is it has a REM pod built into it. So what does that do? If something gets close to that antenna, some, it will go off. So in the event it gets even closer, it'll go even higher. You and I will talk about the color LEDs on the front. Notice I have it pointed down because it's super bright and I didn't want to blind everybody. Thank you. But I'll show you more about that at our first location. Okay. So for, for now, focus on those big red numbers. No, no. To put that. And you get to carry the bag because you weren't on the phone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Giving you a hard time. So, because your group is a little larger than what I normally see, you're going to have the open air spirit box. What does that mean? You're not going to have an earbud, nor will it record anything. So you're going to have to be very careful with the volume in some of our spaces that we're going to go to. Um, so I'm going to set it up to sweep. And these are set to sweep at the slowest rates possible because you guys aren't used to listening to white noise. 
So if you listen to white noise all night long, plus all the history I'm going to give you, somebody's going to fall asleep, I guarantee you. <laughs> so you have one button to worry about on yours as well. It's on the side of the ball speaker. You'll feel it, but you hold it up gently to get the volume, give it a few seconds, and then obviously when I'm talking, we want to keep the volume down. Okay. So you'll probably be paired up with those yeah, two over there, Gary um, and Cindy, so that way they can kind like of listen this. in too. Um, not to mention, he has audio recording, so if you guys actually hear something out of it, we'll have it I on your it audio as well. Um, so the cool thing is too, is I have an audio on my bag. When I was playing with my Sorry. phone when we first met up, yes. I was starting the regular audio recording. So I do that for a couple of reasons. You guys are going to need those stories because I'm taking you to places that the other tours won't go to. So they're not always going to be the common stories of Carl. The second reason is to listen for EVPs. <coughs> EVPs are electronic voice phenomenon, voices you can't hear with your own ears. So as we kind of go, I don't go through the regular audio, it just speeds things along so I can get to, you know, the real data, the spirit boxes, the videos, that kind of thing. All right guys, go have fun, let me know what happens. Thanks for the equipment. I know, I'm telling Sherry, don't think I won't have any stuff tomorrow. Uh, so, all right, so any concerns at this point? Hold your questions, any concerns? Now that you guys have had a few minutes to think about it. I know I talk a lot. So again, sometimes you guys are going to have to interrupt me and I understand that. But if I say let's work, we're kind of running a little behind on certain things. I won't watch time, but if I feel like we're lingering based on questions that, you know, don't need to really be answered until I can answer them fully, I'll, I'll kind of hold off on it just so you know. So let's talk about why we started here. This place behind me is Big John's, right? I put that in your guys' text message. By the way, Cindy, you did get a text, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so... That's important because that's how I get you your link back tomorrow morning. So, um, that's my phone just started going off and on Pandora. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> well, Claire thing is here right now. <laughs> Like, okay, you two are done with the phones already. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Like, it's weird. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's right. weird. And I don't, li I usually listen to Spotify, not even Pandora. Oh, Interesting. That's yeah. weird. So, and I, I'm not a person that usually believes in coincidences. So, you guys are going to find that out real soon as we kind of go through the night. All right, so Big John's, back to that, right? I didn't even get started yet. I didn't interrupt you. <laughs> All right. So, Big John's. This was his place. It was named after a football player, Big John Kennedy. That was his name. He played for the 1947 New York Giants. He used to. Oh, by the way, I want to point out because he's already motioning towards somebody's apartment. Our cameras. People do not like to be filmed. People do not like their cars to be filmed. Um, so, heated warning. If I say let's be discreet with the cameras, it's be very discreet with the cameras. Meaning yours is being pointed at the ground and you're just casually holding a cell phone. People don't know what we're doing out here. The other tours might try to stop you. Like, oh, what's he got you doing now? <coughs> kind of thing. But people definitely don't like their cars being filmed. Alright, so, Big John he used to sit in the back of this bar and he would tell the bartender if the cadets coming over from the Citadel, if they were old enough to drink or not. One night, two guys come in. They're not old enough to drink. He has to bar bartender throw them out so they leave pretty pissed off they come back the next night and they try to steal the cash register from the front of the bar john sees what's going on gets up and just starts beating the hell out of these guys pounding them right into the floor a couple of gunshots go off john gets hit in the neck and the bullet lands in the wall after being shot john gets up goes back to the bar tells the bartender to get him another beer get the two guys on the floor and angle so, the irony of the story is, is don't mess with Big John, he'll kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Second off, nobody died in that story, so what's haunting the place? The bullet hole. Even if it's not still here after the renovations of the Big Johns we now know, John's blood is in this building. People that sit in the front of this bar tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, headache. This is your heated warning. We're going to be dealing with paranormal activity tonight, fingers crossed. I don't know how it's going to affect any of you. If somebody feels any of those symptoms, I need to know immediately. So that way we can move the whole group and get that person to safety. I'm not going to say that I've never had to call paramedics or EMTs on this tour, and it has happened several times. So the last story I will tell you tonight actually deals with, um, I will tell you the story of somebody talking out a few months back, um, and it was definitely relative to the story. It'll make more sense once we get there. So now that everybody has a scared look on their face, let's not talk about our own health. <laughs> if you've taken any Charleston history tour, you already know we had a big earthquake here in 1886. Anybody know that? Or nobody not know that? Okay, nobody knew that. Awesome. So, 
every tour talks about the, that damn earthquake. We're in South Carolina, we're not supposed to have earthquakes. This is apparently where the first death occurred from that earthquake. The mantle you see in the middle of the building, the white bar there, it actually wraps around the front of the bar as well. A piece of it broke off, struck somebody in the back of the head, and killed them. They say you can see his ghost in the middle of East Bay Street in the middle of the night. Notice I said apparently and allegedly a lot with that story? I don't have any proof. It's just a great segue so nobody's thinking about getting sick on the tour. So, <laughs> yeah, nice. Are you guys ready to go ghost hunting? Yeah. Yes! Right, let's we're going to go this way. <laughs> so to give you the explanation of why I walk fast. My wife is disabled. She wears braces to walk. So whenever I'm not with her, I have a tendency to move a lot quicker. I can't. So it's just one of those things where I'm, I'm sorry if I walk too quick, you guys got to slow me down a little bit. Like just burn the calories. It's fine. All right. We're only going half a mile. So. We have long legs. We'll catch up. But we, I don't. we will check on you guys once in a while. So welcome to the big red barn lot. We don't spend a lot of time here. This is just a practice area, so I get to talk to each one of you about your device and what they actually do a little bit further. This is where we keep the horses for the carriage rides. So we're not using any laser beams tonight, which is a good thing. Um, that way I don't have to give a warning to not put lasers on the barn because the horses don't like it. Um, as far as your spirit box, I'm losing names. Melanie. Melanie. Your spirit box, keep it audible to you only, maybe one other person. We don't want to be too loud. The horses do not like the white noise. Everybody else has earbuds, so you're good to go. So the history here is really short and simple. It's a one-liner. Well, you already know that the horses are inside, but this is the same red barn where we held horses that delivered milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. That's it. That's the one-liner I got. So let's talk about spirit boxes and make sense of all of this. <laughs> Spirit boxes, this is not television. This is not, is somebody here? Right? right. Because if somebody answers no, somebody's here. All right. <laughs> okay. So we're going to stay away from yes and no questions all night long. You're going to ask questions like, if somebody's here, tell me what color the big red barn is. Obviously, we're going to be looking and listening for the color red. Let me put something in perspective. You're using song lyrics and DJs to give you conveyed messages, right? So sometimes the word red might not be there, but fire truck, blood. Heart. These three things are specifically red. I would take that as an acceptable answer. What color is the big red barn? Blood. I'm good. That's a direct answer. However, most of the night I'm going to require two happenings, whether it's spirit box or not, to kind of verify what's happening. So, in the event, Trish actually sees the word art on her screen, and Carrie, you actually, sorry, the Terry Carey thing's throwing me off. <laughs> so Carrie, you actually hear the number 40. Art Faircloth was number 40 on Big John's team. Do you see where I now have two clues to verify what's happening? Mm -hmm. A lot of these stories tonight are going to have people with the same name. We're talking about 1700s and 1800s. Lots of Charles, Eliza's, George's, those kind of very common names. We need to know who the hell we're talking to. So again, I'm going to be asking like, okay, that's good, but let's see if there's another clue that's going to pop up. Um, also keep in mind that in the field, you're only going to capture about 40% of the actual evidence. The other 60% actually comes out of you going through the data the next morning. So again... I'm going to hopefully say, like, oh, you heard this? That's great. But I'm going to check the, the, in the morning to see if I can tie it together. So you're going to hear me say those kind of things a lot tonight. In the event you don't get an answer to what color is the big red barn, then you can ask things like, what's inside the barn? Now, we've opened it up, right? Horses, the word delivery would be acceptable. Um, just because I talked about the horses that delivered milk and eggs. So milk and eggs are acceptable. These are clues, right? It's, gonna be, it's not going to be a full-blown conversation. And we're using all of the, most of the tools that I have in the bag. Um, I've busted out all four spirit boxes on purpose, just so that way we, you know, they have a way to communicate. Um, and there's also two pieces of audio and two pieces of video. So, again, there's a lot going on here. What do you got going on? Can I see it? Um, yeah, I have a lot of... A lot of it is 80%. I'm going to say all of it is part of 80% BS. So I have nothing that relates to any of those. I am going to look at the name Kendall. So, can I ask a question? Do you question? say Kendall? Yeah, Kendall's mm -hmm. on there. Yeah, I was gonna ask a question if like any of this could be like if we have 
personal spirits around us? Like, can they come through too? So when I say about a location, a person in history, or one of us, it's because you guys brought somebody with you. That's the that's the relation. Nice. So is there something we need to know? Um, yeah, my brother was killed and in a crash, an accidental crash. His friend ran him over. Okay. And his stuff is at my grandma's, and she just passed away. And Oops. the careless, his friend was drinking. So, like, almost all of this is. And, and his normally, kids want his stuff. Individually, I would call all of those very vague. It probably doesn't mean anything. But at this point, when you're piecing a puzzle together, now, careless, what I would prefer <clears throat> drunk or drinking instead of careless, I would have. Um, and again, those things might have come up on the other spirit boxes that we're not listening to right now. Mm -hmm. um, do you see where I'm kind of going? Yeah. Um, but again, unless there is something a little bit more specific, like I don't want to try to like, oh, this might be this or that might be that. It, it's I really want to see something really piece it together. Okay. You know, what color is a big red barn? And I know I gave you three vague terms, but those three vague terms are specifically red. Okay. Um, so again, careless, I'm still kind of considering that really vague. Let's, okay. let's get the names, let's get dates, let's get something specific about the accident. Um, you know, type of vehicle. It just said slow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just... I get it. I totally get it. Um, and I see where people all the time... Now, I'll be honest, when I have vets on the tour, if they lost somebody overseas, a buddy, companion, comrade, it doesn't matter what story I tell. It's all about that comrade that they lost. Okay. I mean, I'm talking specific names, dates, um, what they did overseas, what their job was, like very specific things about them. Um, so, cameras, let's discuss those real quick, and then we're actually going to go learn more about, and we'll go much deeper in history than horses and football players. <laughs> All so, right. Um, but I'm going to show you more about your REM pod after the next story, just because we're not even going to be using it until then anyway. So, cameras. Um, so definitely spirit boxes, now that you know how to listen, go ahead and turn yours up a little bit, and give it a listen. See? I have like been radio I was going words. to ask you, I'm hearing white noise, and then I'm hearing... It sounds like radio stations yeah. pop in and out. Mm -hmm. That's what I should be hearing. It, exactly. Okay. So okay. it's the radio you know stations. Like yeah. If a DJ comes on and says, buy it now, I want to know that he said buy it now. Oh, got it. Um, so it's those kind of things. Okay. And again, when we get into the 1700s and 1800s type of people we're trying to talk to, buy it now okay. usually yeah. isn't going to be something. Just so you know, the very email is not going to be a thing from that time frame. You know, but if you get like, oh, I heard, you know, a tree, okay. and it was somebody that was a, a planter. You know what I mean? That's where I might draw connection. And thermal imaging. You're going to try to do two different things. You're going to try to keep a person in view, like I mentioned earlier, because that gives us an array of color, and it's a lot easier to find a cold spot when we have a variation of color. The second thing you're going to try to do is keep the sky out of view. The reason why is because that blue dot defaults to the sky because there's no surface. Okay. So it's some places it's going to be impossible, but do your best. Okay. Um, that's really the main gist. Nice slow movements make for, I mean, even a standstill makes for a much easier video to watch for everybody. So again, if you want to get comfortable somewhere once we're in a space and just kind of chill, you can. Okay. If you want to walk around, you can. Just nice slow movements. Okay. Your camera. So point it at me for a second. So I should be in a purple pinkish hue, right? <laughs> so I'm not looking okay. inside the two purple circles that are being generated in there. I'm looking in the darkness for things that should not be able to reflect light. So if something pops out of the darker areas of your frame, that's what I'm looking at when I watch the video on a much larger screen. The other thing I want to point out is that if somebody gets too close, notice how my hand bleached out? You know, if you have a short range, you can turn off, and the long range up here is still working for you. So, um, I'm going to show my friends the back so you can see people in the view. Can you use it because it, it just draws attention from the other tours, and again, too many interruptions. But we're going to stick with the IR. There's a little red button at the top that it turns the short range on. It's lined up with the lens. And I'll let you know when to turn that on. So we're not recording yet, just so you know. Okay. You guys ready just for hold us? this one until I hear. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. So when we get to the next space, you'll be able to go a little bit louder because we're not going to be next to ponies. Um, okay. And again, we're literally going across the street. This is just a practice area, so we're going to kind of peruse through here. Have you had any readings on there at all? When we first logged through, it got a little higher, and but as soon as I came over here, it stopped. Okay. So was it like in the street or more? It was in the street. Okay. It's more than likely from like parking meters. Yeah. Our parking meters have the electrical lines underneath the sidewalks and strong enough to make it go off anywhere all the way up to a four million house. So I don't get excited about those. Even some areas I'm like, all right, we're, don't even pay attention because we're going to be walking over parking meter wires. All right. So we're going to walk slowly so we can kind of get through their spirit boxes and kind of get used to listening to them until we get to the next spot. Again, we're just going to go through this parking lot and then I'll give you some much deeper history. So, let's get it rolling. So, 
हो जाएगा
again, I'm going to be taking notes. I have a little notepad that I keep notes with as I bounce around with all of you. Um, the kids. That's interesting. I already told you there's at least one child, Charles, signer of the Constitution. There are more. You can ask how many and what their names are. Don't poke the bear because there is a tragedy among one of those children. If we poke the bear too often or too hard, all activity will stop. Have you had any readings, by the way? Uh, I got a five that's in here in the middle of the parking lot. Five was the highest one? Yeah. Okay, so. I think I heard a man's voice. That was not very, yeah. So, okay. Well, that one sucks about that. It's not recording. What I will tell you as far as gender goes with the spirit boxes, I don't care what gender you guys are hearing, it's about the message. Unless it's a disembodied voice, unfortunately the only way we're going to be able to tell any disembodied voices are going to be from parents. Because hers is the only one that's recording, so kind of take that for its worth. It's all about the words that are coming out. <coughs> so I appreciate the effort, but I can't prove it. Um, so anyway, the kids. I already told you, don't ask you know, too much. Just ask how many. I'm just going to flat out tell you, you already have the number fourth. Yeah, and fourth then, on now it. it says skip. <laughs> there are four children. I'm going to give you that one because oh, we already wow. have the number fourth that popped up. So, again, not really a stretch, but it is right there, especially when I started talking about the kids. Um, Eliza's death. You can ask anything you want to. How old were you when you died? Where did you die? What did you die from? And what U.S. president was a pallbearer at your funeral? Oh. Like these, notice that none of these questions are yes or no questions. They're very specific. Um, so again, I'm going to give you guys all the answers, and of course we're going to kind of recap before we leave the space. You know, this is a big hotbed for me. In fact, we already have fourth and a, and a five milligauss. Now, I've already I've seen that device go all the way to 148 in this location. What does that mean? That's your microwave on high with you standing next to it. Like, that's how high 148 is. Your television set with all of the wiring behind it and game systems and Blu-ray players, that's about a 40 to 60 milligauss. Microwave on high is about 140 to 170, depending on, on the wattage. So again, I test all this stuff so you guys, you, at least you have a reference. A five milligauss is a spike, for sure, especially since there's nothing underneath us. Um, so word of caution to cameras, there's a lot of vehicles in here. We don't go in between vehicles. Um, people might be spending their brakes. A lot of these cars belong to the workers down here, employees. So they're like, come down here on their brakes. We're not gonna film any of their cars for too long. We're just gonna kind of peruse. Again, if you guys wanna find a standstill spot, your camera is great for finding orbs too. So I found that out real fast as soon as I got it. Um, but yeah, let's definitely get yours recording. I'm gonna hit the button so you know where it's at. It should start flashing. Um, so again, we're gonna spread out and it's kind of limited on space with the amount of cars in here. So if you wanna go to like more open areas, you can. Um, that corner is obviously taken and it looks like that corner is taken because those are big hotbeds. But um, I definitely gotta write down that five milligauss and show Cindy how to use that REM pod because we definitely wanna use that in here. All right, guys, let's spread out. I'll be bouncing around with you here in a minute. So what you did was you just created an EMF field around this antenna. So watch your eyes. If something gets close to it, it will go off. Now, there are different colors that go all the way through. Blue and purple are in the middle, and it's red on the end. I like to use blue and purple as kind of like a call and answer. If somebody's here, make this box go to blue. So that way you can see that they can make it go to blue. I just wanted to show you all the colors. All right, so in the event, it's your emotions that are making it go off. There are four buttons on the right-hand side where your thumb is. You can probably feel them. It's the very bottom one. That if it goes off for any reason, whether it's you or not, I want you to click that button to verify that it's not you. It'll reset the field. So that way, if it gets interrupted again, because your motions, as you walk around, it's gonna, it's gonna go off. So that way you can almost see it as you're moving around. So, again, that's a touchy device. It can be false positives all night long, we never know. 
it just depends on how you handle it. They normally give it to females because you walk more gracefully than us. So it's just one of those things. Um, but again, any recording right now over five milligauss on the on the big reading is what I want to know. So we've already gotten a good base of five milligauss. So let's see if we get anything higher than that. Um, but yeah, definitely have fun. Gary, how you doing over there, buddy? Good. <laughs> Super quiet guy, aren't you? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> So, again, your camera isn't going to be able to capture something every single night for me, but when mm -hmm. I do capture something, it's a holy shit moment. Yeah. Um, like, but if I'm not recording, we're not going to be able to capture it. So, again, yeah, nice slow movements. I mean, you're doing a great job already. Yeah. But, again, when people start moving to their vehicles, just go the other way. Or okay. Pretend you're not filming. Don't look like a YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like as soon as I walked over there, I got like a tiny little bit of a Something for blue cold spots. Mm -hmm. Something happened in the middle. It was a really bright red spot when you walked away. Yeah, it, something happened like with this too. I'm talking about it, but... <laughs> Look, I asked if there were any slaves on this map. Oops. And I got culture. And it was the culture. Oh. You're supposed to do that. Crazy. And it was a good expense. I was only going to use this last year. Mm -hmm. What happened to the How are you? Yeah. That's okay. There are certain spots I get. But, and then I look down and I'm like, oh, okay, that's why. That's why. I haven't been on this side yet. Yeah. I need 
like a, a jersey number, a last name. So, I mean, if there's a Peter Kendall, that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we have the full name. Okay. What? I got consumer. I saw that. here in this hole. That's why the earth won't feel right there either. No matter how many times they fill that hole. Oh, every time I talk about it and I get the goosebumps when I do it too. Oh, I'm sorry. I know what happened right here. a minute just to kind of get used to that and then I'll give you guys some answers. It's fine. There's a good spot for her to be. Whatever happened to have it right here. I asked Tom about Peter. Right here, that's why the earth won't hurt. And it, 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 it helped how Peter her, died and it says nobody cares. It goes up and really high. it came through power of sin. So I don't know. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. Without knowing who Peter is. I just got gangster love. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> English one. There's no gangster love. Oh, right. You got something else, Carrie? No. Really All right, so let's well, regroup. Do we have Alana? Yeah, let's go back to the space where we started. I'll get you guys some answers. So, Melanie, you can turn yours down. Literally just one more 
still saying something. No, no, wait, what does that say? Demanded.
we are going to walk through the rest of this space. However, I am literally taking you right on the edges of where we're allowed to go. We're going to cut through our neighborhood to get to our next space. So again, this is a kind of a place where we just kind of see what pops up while we're here. So all of the things I tell you, are, I don't want to say it's a stall tactic, but it's a stall tactic. So that way your recordings are taking everything in. The next space is another alley. However, I can't take you through it. I've been kicked out. <laughs> we have to remember the tour that I made. We didn't always use the earbuds. We had noisemakers and the blinky lights and all of those kind of things. And it is residential at the end of that particular alley. And I'm the guy who got caught. So I don't go down there anymore. However, we still get enough evidence from me telling the story outside of the alley. So it's one of the most strong places next to the Pinkney Mansion site where I can almost guarantee something will pop up as I'm going through it or in real time. So the story is a little crazy. I'd like to kind of also give you the layout of what the rest of our time together is going to look like. We're going to hit that alley. We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to do some myths and legends based on the spirit box stuff that you guys are hearing. The corner we're going to go to is going to be very popular. You're going to see those big 20-person tours. It is Friday night, so we're probably going to run into at least one or two of them. Um, but we kind of find our spot. We stay out of everybody's way because we're the weird ones, right? Congratulations. <laughs> um, but we're going to see what your spirit boxes are telling me. If they don't tell me anything, I have two go-to stories I tell anyway just to get us prepared for the female pirate that we're going to dive into, like what we did at the Pinkney Mansion site. So if you're into pirates, like this is a whopper of a story, and everybody's an adult here, so I don't have to keep it PG-13. Nope. So, again, it, this is a, a crazy story. Now, the crazy thing about this pirate story at the end is it's a hit or miss get a lot, we get nothing. So I hate to end a tour like that, but it's one of those things where you just never know. Like the other night, we actually got quite a few things. Last got night, frogs. kind of a dud. So we'll just see what happens. Oh, I, it was crazy. We did get a full set, like a full date, like in scattered pieces. It was specific numbers that added up to a date of something that happened in that pirate story. So it was, we did get the number 11, we did get the number 20, and we got the number 28. The pirate trial I'll tell you about took place on November 11, 28th, 1720. Okay. So, I think that works. Oh. You're good, you're good. All right, so, um, again, as we walk out of here, keep listening to your spirit boxes. Over the videos, I'll ask you to end your video once we reach the end of the alley. So, this footage as we're kind of walking through. Uh, looks like Terry's already stopped his, which is perfectly fine. Has your battery died yet? No. Okay. Absolutely. Normally, it dies from here to the Philadelphia alley, so we'll kind of see where you're at with things. Perfect. Let's roll along. stand there and shoot that way. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, bad direction, my bad. Um, and I'll try to stay out of the way so that way you can you can film. If people start to walk by, again, don't be YouTubers, just kind of be casual. <laughs> You're gonna see a lot of tours go down there. We're allowed to go halfway. Again, at the end of this man at the end of this is a beautiful mansion and it's considered residential. So that's our limit, is to go halfway. I just think it's rude to have you guys investigate while other tours are trying to conduct their story. We all tell the same story and it's, this is Philadelphia Alley. It used to be called Duelers Alley. So this is where the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. We all tell the story of that one specific duel. So here's how it goes. There's a doctor that moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Joseph Brown Ladd. He moves down here. Notice I slow down on keywords for you spirit box folks. Um, so he moves down here because his fiance, Amanda, just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents and she has an attorney that's helping her with this money. He thinks that the doctor's just after Amanda's cash flow, and he tells her to get rid of the doctor. So the doctor moves to Charleston to prove that he's not. So the coachman that brings him into town sets him up to be robbed and killed. So it wasn't a very good start to his stay in Charleston. But somebody was walking by and seeing what was happening. He was a local. His name was Ralph Isaacs. Now Ralph, I want to stop there because Ralph has the same initials as to where the doctor came from. Ralph Isaacs, Rhode Island. R.I. will show up on your spirit boxes. And I need a secondary clue so I know who it belongs to, the doctor or Ralph. So, Ralph says, hey dude, you don't want to stay here. This the guy inside, he's going to try to kill you and the guys are going to rob you and take all your money. He's like, I have a place like with some friends you can rent a room from at 59 Church Street. 
So at 59 Church Street, the doctor takes him up at the offer, and Ralph and the doctor become friends. The doctor's practice starts to take off here in Charleston. So he's making his own money. He's proving his point. He becomes known as the whistling doctor because he whistled all the time. Now, every haunted city has a whistler. Ours just happens to be a doctor. So we'll wait for these young ladies to go by. Um, but yet they have like 10 more. <laughs> so the doctor and Ralph are going to see plays together all the time because they're friends. That's what you do. But the doctor makes more money. He gets better seats. They can't sit next to each other. They talk about these plays on the way home. And one night they go see William III from Shakespeare and they start arguing over the new actress. The doctor thought she was great and Ralph not so much. It gets a little heated when Ralph starts insulting Amanda back home in Rhode Island. So they get pissed off at each other and they go their separate ways. Ralph is from here, remember. He has friends at the newspaper. He puts an ad in the paper telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Pretty jerk move, if you ask me. The doctor sees the ad, rebuttals with, we're going to go to Dooler's Alley and settle this. They come down, they take their 20 paces, they turn. The doctor points his gun in the air and he shoots. He did not want to kill his friend. And it's usually what happened when you came to a duel. Nobody, it's not always a death. Um, oh, it's coming from your spirit box. I seen the shadow that was weird and it's the string hanging from the spirit box. I'm like, what in the world is that? Somebody start filming. Um, but anyway, so Ralph still has his one shot and he puts it in the kneecap. Sorry, Tony. You're, You're just the one in front of me. He shoots him in the kneecap. So Ralph, or the doctor doesn't die either. He, Ralph proved his point. He's still pissed. So. The doctor's friends pick him up. They carry him home to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. He probably, he was a doctor, so he probably tried to heal himself by bleeding it out. So, the yeah, weird doctor. thing, I know, right? <laughs> so, that's the story. But they say as you walk through this alley, you can actually hear the whistles from the doctor. Now, you can first off see how gorgeous it is down there. The lighting down there for pictures is, is perfect, day or night. It is very quiet, even though it's three blocks away from East Bay Street. You normally can't even hear the hustle and bustle from that during the daytime. So it's very quiet. So I invite you to take a walk down there, turn on your voice recorders on your phones, listen to it later. Keep in mind, all the locals know the story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street on the other side, we're all going to throw a whistle down the alley to throw you off, including me. I do it every single night on my way back to my garage. <laughs> so it's even my daughter's on the tour, we race to see who's going to get to the whistle first. <laughs> so it's just kind of a fun thing that we do. My daughter's 15, and she actually lives in Myrtle Beach. So when she's down here, she's always on the tours helping you guys out because she knows all the stories and the gadgets. But anyway, um, they also say you can hear gunshots. I just don't have any proof of that at all. But when I used to take people down there, I have a few whistles in the background I can't debunk. So, I mean, they're very faint, so take it for what it is. Um, one of, I told you guys I've been booted out of this one. Um, at the end, this alley didn't always come all the way through to Cumberland, so those bricks at the other side are older than the bricks on this side. Those bricks on the other side are sun-dried bricks from slave children. We actually have a full handprint and fingerprints in the bricks down at the other side. Yeah, I used to show it to my guests because it just shows how far we've come in our society, right? But everybody wants to put an EMF meter near it or a spirit box or whatever. I treat it the same way I treat cemeteries. Nobody's gonna hang around that damn brick and that kid doesn't wanna go back to that brick in the afterlife. <laughs> However, one night we got caught. Here's the interesting thing. That was November 26th, 2020. So I obviously didn't go back there and I had to reroute the tour on November 28th because 27th was Thanksgiving. I didn't work that night. November 28th, 2020, I'm talking about this pirate thing I, that I, I don't know the whole story. I'm kind of winging it. And um, I even told my guests, like, we're going to wing it. I'm going to tell you what I know. Um, and I don't know why he didn't even turn down there. But you can't turn down there. You can't put a car down there. Um, you notice there's a sign. It should say that. Um, but anyway, so November 28th, 2020, somebody hears the number 300, and I have no idea what the hell it means. I go home and research it, and it turns out that the trial that I told you about earlier was November 28th, 1720. We were there on the exact 300 year anniversary. So I was like, damn it, now I gotta talk about pirates. I was hoping for a vampire story. Like I'm a vampire guy, not pirates. But since then, obviously I've been going back and going back and it is a hit or miss. Some nights are great, but Anne is said to be seen all over town. And we'll talk about her here in just a few minutes. Have we heard or seen anything on your word list? Can I take a look at it before we move on? Pale. About pale? Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, it was one of those larger groups. Alright, so, still got nothing. 
Have you heard anything on yours? I know you've been kind of back and forth. Your battery died. It's okay. We're going to swap it out to the next one. You can stop your recording for now. Uh, you got swapped again? Okay. Yeah. Just kind of know, yeah. so I know who, to, who I'm going to. Yeah. I think Trish is trying out everything, right? Yeah, it's your birthday weekend. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Mine was last weekend. Actually, was it was the beginning of the week. Oh, what, when? February 28th. March, March, March 2nd. So, we're only a few oh. days apart. Yep. So, um, ask the name of the pirate ship. What is the name of the pirate ship? Or Calico, you said? Calico, yeah. It's like there's so many of them. They're all trying to see something different. Kind of reminds me of like uh, the Transformers. And they are trying to pick a word from each different thing. Yeah, like I got a lot actually. I know it's <coughs>
Cause you'll, you'll get the, at least some of the audio from this, everything I hear. They're so loud here. Like every time I walk around, they get really loud. Let's go closer to the wall. Oh, he needs somebody in the shot. I forgot. Oh, I haven't seen nothing. No, I got nothing on that. The only thing I can come up with is the um, 79 are the numbers reversed of when Anne is allegedly born of 1697. I got the name Ella. Could be one of the kids, but I don't know for certain. Can't prove it. All right, we got everybody back. Yes.